what's happening here? So what we've got here is the engine uh, and the transmission are meeting for the first time. In front of us we've got a transmission that was built in Antwerp, which is where we build the large majority of our transmissions for uh, Basel and built product. Uh, it's been shipped in and it's being mounted to our AGV, an automatically guided vehicle, where it will travel across the workspace and it will be mated with its engine. Uh, the engine is not a unit we've taken from the shelf, from stock, it's one that has been a calculated order. The two units, when the dealer or customer places their order, the engine and transmission are built and are matched together at the time, but the first time they meet is here in Basel. When we install the engine and transmission at the far side here, you'll also see the front axle gets fitted too. After these first two stations, you have your chassis, so to speak. So and this then, is the birth? This is the birth of, of a new Holland. This is it, yeah. So I always was regarded as a helpful sort of a man, you know. Thank you very much. Here you go. I have took my part. There you go, Dad. You can, you, you can put your name on that one now. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I helped build a new Holland. <laughs> As I can. <laughs> Everything fits together rather than being put together. So the tombstone is on, then they're going to drop back and put on the axle. What axle do you use? That's a CNH axle, so it's our As own well. inbuilt axle, yeah. Built in Modena. That's what we call our Class 4 axle. Now that the chassis is, is complete, so to speak, it then gets picked up on the secondary line, which we'll take a look at in a moment, where it's suspended on a constantly moving line and we start bolting on the ancillaries like your, your radiators, your bits and pieces that complete the specification of the so tractor. That, so she's, pre, she's at the gantry stage now? Yeah, and it'll be lifted onto the, the, I'm onto the, big the line. suspended line. And yeah. then all the bits and bobs, right? It's all exciting. <laughs> now it's just basically come around two or three more prep stations. I see a couple of wee differences, Liam. Your pipe work for your steering has been fitted and some of the pipe work then for extra hydraulic services that were shared between engine and transmission to so some of these long pipes. We all want them to be painted as well, so we make sure they're fitted. What type of a paint system do you use here in Basildon? Is it a dip job, a powder? A... It's a fully automated um, paint booth. We don't dip paint, we spray in an automatic uh, process and then it's automatically baked as part of the process afterwards. And is that the same process done in your other factories for the paint? Uh, on transmissions and tractors, yes. The harvester product is slightly different. It is dipped. It's all, oh, it's dipped. It is dipped. It's three or four tanks, or? It's a, yeah, tanked and it's electro electrostatically dipped. Tim like, Brian, yeah. what is your official role? I know, I know, look, well, anybody who runs a forage or, or combine in Ireland or Scotland will know who you are, basically. We know you're that, but you're also a bit of blue paint as well. You're There's a little bit of blue paint there too, so yeah, I look after Harvester for Ireland and Scotland, and then I look after the tractor side for Northern Ireland, and also for the border counties as well. So this is basically just giving her time, Brian, to cure? Just time. They put a hardener into the paint, uh, just to cure it, and then it'll go over, and then go back up the final. And whenever the black goes on, you'll see it's actually quite dull, until it actually bakes, and that's where it gives it this gloss. Yeah. This tractor's now been cured for approximately 40 minutes. She's heading into the second spray booth where she's getting her final coat. Correct, yeah, she gets her top coat. She's not burnt in the oven or she's not <laughs> She's not she's baked, not baked in the oven. yeah. We don't, we don't want to burn any of them, but yeah. It will get a bake now once the top coat has gone on. The primer is still tacky when we apply the uh, top coat for a wet and wet. So if I touched this now, I would get a grey finger. You would. So I could fingerprint the tractor. She has now been primed. Yep. 40 minutes later, she's heading into the second, and she's going in there. Approximately how long does it take? To paint, I think it's 11 minutes to paint. And is this robot or manual, this, this uh, paint? It should be ro robot. There will be manual in some cases when we do special paint orders. So if you want your tractor a different colour, it's done manually because we're not going to uh, recolour a whole system, obviously having to draw 200 litres of paint out to, to do one unit. So they're done manually. And some uh, maybe pre-builds, if we haven't got a paint program set up, as you saw, it's all robotic. So the program won't be made for it. We'll be doing those manually as well. So these guys are basically in here to... Ensure. For some reason that the robot... But they, robots are robots. They, they, could, they, they maybe need maintenance so they could break down or whatever, but... And they only do what they're told. They don't think. But you have guys there that are jumping in there and, and doing the job there yes. today, like the likes of today. Will they be drumming that line all day today or just for a period of time? It's hard to know. No, the periods of time they can only stay in there for so long, even yeah. though they've got full face masks and all the rest of it. From a health and safety point of view, they have to have regular breaks. 
A boy? Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to go ahead and ask him? <laughs> no, yeah, no, you're alright. <laughs> So there you go, the robots. Oh, the robots working away the robots, too. Are, yeah, the robot applies a top coat and these boys check between them. All they're doing is they're touching up. They're certainly, because of electrostatic, because you've got t really tight areas, you can have a swirl, so you can have bits where the electrostatic doesn't get because the electric charge is circulating in tight corners. And all they're doing is touching up what the robot. So that's just literally a belt braces to make sure that you're getting a, a full coverage. And it's back to the old saying, whilst Automization is fantastic and it's done everything. Old fashioned human power is hard to beat in times too, you know. Man Final power. quality check can only be by human. So they're begged for approximately an hour, will we say? Sounds good. Half an hour anyway. 40, 40 <laughs> minutes would work better than yeah, yeah. everything else. <laughs>we're just coming off the end of the paint process this is where it becomes very interesting your line actually splits uh, basically you have, you have two lines now you have your HD's which is your heavy duties which is your 290 and uh, 315 HD models because of the weight of those the gantry can't support them so they have to go on to their own line so this autonomous vehicle here picks it up and moves it round to the start of the HD line which we will pick up with later because that's where the absolute flagship product uh, that Baseldon produces is on that line. Now back to the main business of uh, getting a new haul on made. They're all lined up here and we're just going to take a wee quick race around the line. I mean she's sitting here practically the same, she's just come up out of the paint, she's dropping down and this is like the first station here where someone's doing something to her. We can start to see electrics and things getting added on. So hydraulic pipe works is in this this stall here starting to come on. So this is what's putting all the bits and pieces in that's going to drive this tractor. It's going to super steer. That's a super steer, is right. Well, how do you look all around us? We've got air guns, <laughs> so there's something big going on here. There's everything going on. So you've uh, again, you've additional every stage you come along. You have another section added onto your. So you've got pipework coming on here. That's the support. Slowly and at this stage, once they come out of the paint shop around here, like they're 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 dry. They're, they're, they're all as soon as they come out of the paint shop, they were working on them straight away. So you can touch the paint as soon as it comes out of the, yeah. the oven. It's uh, they're ready to go. Link arms are all now fitted as well. You're and seeing this, this few cables. This down. line never stops. This line never stops except for tea breaks, lunch, yeah. and emergencies. So you have to you have to work with the line. You've got whatever period of time she's in your zone to work. Every unit's got a, 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 a kit of tools. A kit of uh, gear, and they must. That's their job to fit that kit of gear in their set allocated time. You can see the electrics getting a lot busier. Linkage cables being added here. Ah, Introduction yes. to the, elect the engine harness. Be a good one. <laughs> They're starting to take shape. Starting now. to build up. See some of the bar eyes. So really, every every different tractor we come up along here and see. Has something different, you know. They're not. There's they not, two yeah, the not two tractors not the same. Not two tractors. Not two tractors the same. Everyone's different. Everyone's a bit different. Most likely. Uh, Go on. Most likely for what market? Us. Us. Them and us. <laughs> yeah, 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 them and us. Where's she going? Where's she going? UK. UK market. Well done. And how do you notice that, Gareth? Oh, just a wee tip I learned a few years ago. <laughs> But that's something I never just... Why do we advocate the pick up heights so much? That's a good question, isn't it? I mean, we're the only... There's only the UK, ROI, mm -hmm. and one of the Scandinavian countries. I think New Zealand might take it as well. But apart from that, we're the only ones who use the auto hitch. Everybody else uses four-wheel trailers. Hence the reason braking is never an issue in the continent. They can go out to 50 and 60 kilometres per hour. And trailer brakes, tractor brakes are never an issue. I know, but you take some of your tractors there. Some of these tractors, if you look at them, and I think the 315 is one that's quite like that. They they have a... They're plated for a lot heavier than what you can actually do. Your, your three-point linkage limits the downward force 
on the back axle. On the back axle, you know, you're only like Raz. If you had the proper hitch, if you had an option of the proper hitch, maybe there's a room that we could start and get our governments to look at, getting more weights added on to Heavier and heavier weights, absolutely. I mean, for you, your auto hitch is limited to three and a half ton download. And from that there, that's where your restrictions start. Now find me a trailer that actually has got a three and a half ton download. Yeah, and that's, but that's very damn. I mean, you know yourself. You take it. You're trying to work, and you're working low loaders. That's it's, it's the same with the lorry game. It's very hard. You know, not only are you limited to say 20 ton or a 24 ton or a 30 ton payload, you have to have it placed right. It has to be placed you right. Know. Oh, they're getting very busy now. You'll we're getting see into here. Our, we're starting to get into our 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 dock, uh, which is for your tier four final emissionization. I should add blue pump up there. Our production line has just started again here. You so can we can see it rolling around on it. You on can the, see them the starting to move. You can see the lads start to work here again. Well, she, she's starting to look like a tractor now. Starting to look like a tractor. You've got the uh, catalytic converter along with SER canister on the right hand side. That's where your mixing chamber for your exhaust gas. We talked about the add blue. and Yes, add blue is another fluid you have to add in, but it's one of the easiest ways and this is one of the successes that we have because we're after treating 100 percent of the gas unlike some of the competitors that actually will exhaust gas would circulate some and then top up with that blue we're 100 percent exhaust gas to circulate our uh, ser technology so the engine is breathing all clean air going in and that's helping on the fuel efficiency and the the responsiveness but not every tractor going down this line is kitted out tier four final no it's not um, well spotted. Because this is a manufacturing facility for the worldwide production, it's uh, one of the only European factories that is able to build non-emissionized tractors legally. Because we're exporting to all, all countries around the world, you have to have a special license because obviously it's built in the UK. So we know this, just by looking at this tractor, we know this is not necessarily a UK built tractor, but it's going to a country with the An emissionized country. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should that be the States or Canada? Hello, sir. Yes, Sorry. Thank you. thank you. Whether that be the States, Canada or Europe or something along yeah. those lines. We're starting to rise up again now. And this is where our tractors, they're fully kitted out now. All the electrical tests have been checked out. They're now in the process of moving down onto the main final drag, which will get their uh, cab and their bonnet on them. And uh, that's where the end of the line and they're fired up for the first time. That's my yoke. This is an aircon model. Be prepared for the, the cab drop. Basel in history. Over 1.8 million tractors produced in this factory. Down the back of the plant is where the old forward engine was made, right the way through to the Power Star, to the 40 series and TMs. 3.1 million engines went through this plant. Two kilometres of assembly lines, 12,236 different tractor specifications. That's the amount of different so, variations that can be selected. That tractor could be number one. Yep. And that tractor behind it could be number 12,236. So that means these operators, they have a bit of work to do to make sure certain stations will be very similar. But there comes so. a point when a guy could be making so many different variations of tractors. So what's happening now, Brian? This is where she's getting filled up with all her liquids, so you've got your oil and your fuel and brake fluid. Everything's all set up here. Full tanks of diesel for all the New Holland supply. Absolutely. There's only one last thing that needs to be done. Put on the surrounds, the panels, and lastly, the wheels. So here's your tire truck basically come in here. So they come in here on a truck, and again, this is where the art comes in, that these wheels will match that tractor up the line. Then just ahead of that, we can see the T7 360 bar axle, row crop tires. She's obviously somewhere like America where she's going to be jeweled up. United States. United States. <laughs> see? 
Expert. And this just shows you the variation of tires that can be offered in the factory. Road cramps, to Michelin, multi-bibs. Here's a T7 165S coming off the production line. First question I have to ask is I've never seen an S. Mm -hmm. So what's that? Okay, so the T7 165S isn't currently offered in the UK and Irish market yet. Well, that's why I haven't seen that's it. That's why yet. you wouldn't have seen <laughs> it. But uh, she's, a, she's a new specification, so she's a lower spec um, T7 model with only maximum rated power. There is no boost on this tractor. 40 kilometers per hour only, halogen lights and lower specifications features. The roof looks a bit funny. So yep, she has the low profile roof not only to keep the overall height down because we realize a lot of these units will end up on mixed farms but also uh, just to keep the the overall cost down what's happening here now so this is the first time the tractor comes off the production line it's being assisted by our tow rig with the airbrush bonnet and here the tractor is taken away onto the pdi line so this is the pre-delivery inspection line this is the point where we have operatives in the plant who basically take each of the units down the production line there and treat it like it's their own. So they'll test all the fundamentals of that tractor. So that could be the drive line, PTO, hydraulics, you know, the performance, the lights, the air conditioning, etc. And this is where they check it. And they've got various equipment along this line to do that, including, say, load cells for the linkage, front and rear. And indeed, we have our very recent investment of a rolling road cell two of and they are used for all 50k tractors and indeed testing options such as ABS. Take me to my baby. <laughs> no, no way it has to go to Armstrong's. Nah, see you later, boys. So your role now is? My role now is uh, diagnosing, uh, testing and diagnosing this vehicle before it leaves um, the line. Well, that kind of is an important job. This isn't the normal vehicle. This isn't the normal trailer. We're in 315 Blue Power HD. This is like prey to the basil. It is. This is our, um, our headline vehicle. It's our flagship. So there's every single feature that we can possibly have is on this vehicle. Yeah, partly when I ordered it, I ordered 49,000 euros worth of extras. Did you really? Partly <laughs> so, I'm saying it's 100% serious. <laughs> <laughs> partly I managed to put 49,000 euros worth of extras in there. Well, there's probably nearly 30,000 euros of guidance. There's a lot of guidance on it, yeah, and then the blue power and all the rest of yep. it, yep. We have into park or neutral to start, clutch down, ignition on, we wait for the lights to extinguish, mm -hmm. and then we crank, have a look round, make sure we're all alright. We can release the clutch now because this vehicle is a CVT, so now we're prepared to go forwards mm -hmm. and we use the propulsion lever to move yep. forwards, okay? These are very wide vehicles and they have bar axles, so we've got a warning here. Tells us there's bits sticking out, so we have to be vigilant. How long have you worked here then in total? 22 Whoa, years. Long time. <laughs> That's wow. not long but by a lot of people. This is a good, good place to work. You're okay, I'll keep you right, my friend. You're fine here, apart from that wee boy there. So now what we would normally be doing is going forwards into this area. So what are we looking for in the road test? We are basically ca carrying out all the dynamic testing. I see they're going to have to get in and get PDA and get the uh, get the front axles and all. Like, it makes a big difference to them when you get them out and get them all set yes. up for the field. We have to limit them because lorry drivers are driving them. So we ah. limit the steering so they can't damage the tractor. Ah, so that's, I've often wondered why that has to be, always be done the PDA. You're, you're kind of trying to, yeah, yeah. We're protecting you. your product until it gets <laughs> to the... Yeah. So now you're hooked up to the box, which... Yep, so we're hooked up to the box. And this box links with this rolling road? It does indeed. 
and it's picked up the order number out of the controller. So we confirm everything with these buttons. Yeah. That means that these are the different systems that he's talking to. So. Right, so now it's telling us to drive on. Exhaust gases on. Yep. Oh yes, it's environmentally controlled in here. Drive on complete, ready for test. Waiting for right test state. Right. So it's shutting the back doors and putting the rear chocks in. Oh, she shuts in first and then they go back up. So yeah, yeah. Oh, do you test forward and reverse? Yes. Ah, yes, yes. And yes. braking. Yes, 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 yes. So it's measuring the torque on one side and driving on the other side. Manual diff lock off. So now when it's see one wheel will stop so you can see that the diff lock's come out. That should be a pass. <laughs> Ready for brake test, yes. Select auto four wheel drive, okay. Yeah. So what it does first is it, it checks the residual resistance in the tractor. And once it's got that, gently brake. So I gently brake and it's check, checking that we're getting brake force from both release brakes and then it's see the brakes. Select manual four wheel drive. If something was to fail in this so test. What we get is a report yeah. which will then tell us What's wrong. What, what you've got to go and fix. So it'll tell us that we needed to fix something with the diff lock, yeah. something with the PTO. So it tells us what we've got to check. And now it's telling us it's safe to drive off.